So I am admittedly enjoying the mainstream media and Democratic Party elites come to terms with the prospect that Bernie Sanders may very well become the Democratic Party's nominee. But someone else who a lot of us hadn't thought about and what he's going through, you know, in this uh, coming to terms process is uh, Donald Trump. Because like it or not, he may have to face Bernie Sanders. And we all know Trump is the most afraid of Bernie Sanders. Um, this became clear back in 2016 when after he basically had the Republican Party nomination on lock, he floated the idea, I think on a late night show, of debating Bernie Sanders, a Trump versus Bernie debate. It was trending on Twitter. There was a lot of hype for it. And then Bernie Sanders agreed, sure, I'm down, we'll debate. But then all of a sudden, Trump backed away from it. He is afraid of Bernie Sanders. And unlike all the other Democratic Party presidential contenders, he attacks Bernie Sanders the least. And it almost seems like he goes out of his way to avoid attacking Bernie Sanders at times. Like when Bernie Sanders first announced that he was running again in 2020, Donald Trump said nothing negative about Bernie Sanders. So, I mean, it's evident to me that Trump doesn't know how to respond to Bernie Sanders because any appeal that Trump has it's undercut by Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is the true anti-establishment, real populist candidate. So what is Trump going to say about Bernie Sanders? I mean, calling him crazy Bernie, that's not going to land. Like, crooked Hillary landed because there was truth to that, right? Now, it was hypocritical because Donald Trump is also very crooked. But nonetheless, crazy Bernie doesn't really mean anything when Donald Trump is the one making that argument when he struggles to string together a coherent sentence. So it's not going to land. And I don't think he knows how to deal with Bernie Sanders. Nonetheless, like it or not, he may have to. So he's afraid. And as a result, he has sent out emails about Bernie Sanders two days in a row attacking him. And I love this because it offers us a glimpse into the types of attacks that we might see during the general if we actually do get a Trump versus Bernie situation. And uh, I'll just say this, I feel a lot more confident about Bernie's chances after seeing what Trump is using to attack him on. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's really, really bad. Um, so in the first email he sent out, it reads, Dangerous. Bernie Sanders can't be trusted to defend American lives. Sanders opposed taking top terrorist Soleimani off the battlefield while repeating Iranian and Russian propaganda. So this is a horrible strategy for a number of reasons. First of all, he's literally invoking anti-Russian hysteria to attack Bernie Sanders. Now, on top of that, um, he's citing something that he did, which only has a plurality of support from Americans, 43 to 47%, I believe, approve of the killing of Soleimani, which is way too high, mind you. But Bernie Sanders can easily take him on here because he can show videos of Donald Trump saying he was anti-interventionist in 2016 and contrast that with what he's doing now. Like, if you truly want to go about this by being the stronger candidate, the defense candidate, when you won because you got a lot of people to believe that you were less hawkish than Hillary Clinton, like, Bernie's going to mop the floor with you. But that's not the only attack. So for the second email, he says, Fact, Bernie Sanders is a wealthy, fossil fuel-guzzling millionaire. Just like the wealthy Hollywood elite, Bernie Sanders lectures Americans how to live their lives while doing the exact opposite. So let me put this into perspective for you. Donald Trump, a billionaire, is attacking Bernie Sanders for being a millionaire and is claiming that he's elitist. Like, I don't think this is going to play as well as Trump believes it will in a general election. If you put, you know, Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders up side by side, I mean, that juxtaposition, and you had to ask people, who do you believe is truly, you know, anti-elitist? Nine times out of ten, they're going to say it's Bernie Sanders. Um, so this is not going to land, but I want to go a little bit further into this email and just read like a paragraph to see the route that he's taking when it comes to his Bernie is an elitist argument. Quote, Bernie Sanders is lecturing the American people that they need to pay more in taxes, surrender their private health insurance plans, and accept job losses in order to implement his extreme left-wing agenda. But he's just another Hollywood-style hypocrite who demands working-class Americans make sacrifices. And we'll stop there because, I mean, this is just, it's, <laughs> it's laughable. So, I mean, when it comes to Bernie Sanders facilitating job losses, he's supporting a policy that is literally titled Federal Jobs Guarantee. Federal Jobs Guarantee. You're not going to be able to easily argue against that. And Donald Trump is effectively taking a pro-private insurance stance here. 
Like, Trump doesn't realize that if he wants to win, then he has to come up with an argument that appeals to independents and young Republican voters, young voters who aren't voting, because there's going to be a lot of young people that come out to vote for Bernie Sanders. And if that truly is the case, if he can galvanize the youth, it's over for Donald Trump. So Donald Trump, he needs to work on some type of argument that actually appeals to young voters. And arguing in defense of the status quo is not going to do the trick. These are policies like a federal jobs guarantee, uh, Medicare for all, that appeal to young people. So Trump doesn't know what to do against Bernie Sanders. And we can see that what he's trying to do is still appeal to populist individuals, claim that he is anti-establishment, but he doesn't realize that he's making a critical mistake and he reveals how out of touch he is when you look at his new catchphrase, keep America great. Now, if he kept the Make America Great Again slogan, I think that that would have been fine. You could have argued, look, America is getting greater, but we're not fully there yet. We have more work to do. I need, I need another four years. But he's saying keep America great. This is painfully out of touch. And this is literally the Democrat slogan back in 2016. Does anyone remember Debbie Wasserman Schultz wearing hats that said America is already great? I mean, do you understand what you're communicating to voters here? It assumes that all of their problems have been solved and, you know, make America great again. It simply meant that Americans needed to elect you and you are the greatness. But the reason why that slogan worked so well for Trump in 2016 was because it was a blank slate. Like people could attribute meaning to it and think through what they believed would make America great again. But with keep America great, you're just telling them that it's already great. And in a sense, you're erasing all of the issues that normal working Americans face. And the reason why Donald Trump won over voters in the Rust Belt was because he was speaking to the issues that impact them. But if you're telling Americans that America is already great when most of the country is living paycheck to paycheck, I mean, you're literally making the same mistake that Democrats made back in 2016. So this is great. I'm not complaining. Keep it up. Use this strategy, Trump, because um, I want you to make this case in a general against Bernie because it's not going to work very well for you. Now, Bernie responded saying, Donald Trump is attacking us because he knows we will beat him in the general election. Absolutely. Um, this attack is really, really bad. Like, I honestly expected Donald Trump to come up with something better. Like, I wasn't expecting him to, you know, have some type of compelling case against Bernie Sanders, but I actually had higher expectations than this, at least. So, I mean, at this rate... If he releases another email by tomorrow, he will call Bernie Sanders a communist. And really, he's just flailing at this point. Nothing he can say about Bernie will convince Americans that he's the true anti-establishment candidate. Everyone knows it's Bernie Sanders. So um, this is great. Like in the events, Bernie Sanders is the nominee and he's going up against Donald Trump. My confidence after seeing a preview of the attacks that Trump would use against him, it just increased. Like, it's not a foregone conclusion. We still have to work towards that goal of winning the presidency. But seeing what Trump comes up with here, I feel a lot more confident now. Uh, this is not a good attack. It's not going to land. Trump is, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's not going to do too well against Bernie Sanders. Uh, this tells you everything you need to know. If you want to win, vote for Bernie because Trump does not know how to attack him. But the Democrats are taking their cues from socialist Bernie Sanders and that group. Omar, AOC, Talib, isn't she a nice woman? Talib. Talib. Why? What a group. But they're the leaders of the party. They're really, in my opinion, the leaders. That's what happened. That's how they got into this impeachment hoax. The leaders of the party are this AOC, uh, Talib, and Omar. And Pelosi meets him and she shakes and quivers and she's very scared. Ha! Got him! You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad.